Welcome to On The Chain. This is Jeff here with co-host Chip. Tonight, we have so many great topics to dive into. We're going to talk about Ripple. We're going to talk about XRP. We're going to talk about digital asset, especially when it comes to instant settlements. We're seeing a lot of corporate retail adoption. And you know what? Cryptocurrency is the way to liberate your money. So I'm ready. Let's go. Welcome to On The Chain. Hey, Jeff. Yep. What What's is up? up? Lots of stuff, man. I mean, there's like lots of stuff going on. It's really exciting in the crypto verse, the metaverse. We're hearing a lot about the metaverse. IBM's doing a metaverse. Uh, the Facebook now called Meta, they're doing a metaverse. Everyone's jumping into it. And uh, there's just so much exciting things going on that we're probably not going to cover them all tonight, but that's okay. We don't have to cover them all tonight. I kind of wanted to start off with just this one tweet right here, which is kind of funny, interesting in a weird way. But this is uh, Garlinghouse and Chris Brummer. If you recall, Chris Brummer was slated. There's a lot of chatter back in the day when the new administration was coming in and he was slated to be, I think it was the new CFTC, CFTC chair. And then, you know, Chris, because he's interviewed Garlinghouse, I don't know how many times, just a whole slew of different times. You you recall, Jeff? I do. And so Chris Chris Brummer said, "I offer my two cents here." And this is a New York Times article where the, it says regulators ask Congress to create new rules for a crypto. Okay. And then uh, we had Garlinghouse who said this. Hey, uh, Dr. Chris Brummer is right. There is a lot at stake here, which is why we need Congress to play a leading role in providing guidance and clarity. For not just stable coins, or as what does Gary call them? Gary Gensler he calls them stable value coins. <laughs> stable it's, it's value. Another coins. another way of saying secure. Secure. You just did a. That was another uh, another one of our to add to the thing. Not all the stable coins is recommended by the PWG report, but crypto broadly as soon as possible. And then our favorite counsel, general counsel, right, and head counsel for. Ripple, none other than Stuart Alderati, who is very clever when he comes in with this stuff. But he says, this shouldn't be a partisan issue. And in some con some in Congress are seeking to take on the mantle. Unfortunately, while the U.S. as a whole flounders. I said flounder, Jeff. I thought he was talking about fish for a second. But he's talking about, about fish, especially when you look at whole flounder. Yeah, this is a whole flounder Breaded. as a whole Breaded. flounder. Breaded. Do you want half or do you want whole? But he says, unfortunately, while the U.S. flounders, other respected economic centers are seizing the advantage. To name just one, EU, with Mika taking on all input from stakeholders. He's bringing up a good point here, Jeff. What do you think about his critique and his comparison to the EU and Mika? Disagree. No. Um, you know, it's, it's 100%, 100% spot on because... You know, and, and it's interesting, Chip, because one of the things that you're pointing out here is the fact that the U.S. is floundering. <laughs> and, you know, how, how many times, how many ways can you say floundering? Are they tripping over themselves? Are they are they running around with their shoelaces tied together? Are they, you know, doing the exact opposite of what they should be doing? They look at crypto and then they uh, then they pick up their old rotary dial phone and say, Hey, maybe that's a better way to move money. You know, they're looking for their old fashioned modems. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not sure, but then other countries, you know, are definitely finding uh, new uh, ways to uh, become more regulatory friendly. And we have a video clip chip that I want to play a little bit later. Um, there's a, a new YouTuber out there and she made a video going around oh, yeah. Kiev in the Ukraine. And, it's it's really astounding, uh, you know, astonishing. We'll talk a little bit about that and the significance of uh, even Ukraine becoming regulatory friendly. Yeah, and also too, there's another video that a content creator made that is just absolutely. I, I thought it was just a lot of fun to watch. I watched like three times, and I'm like, I think our audience would dig this. So it's great that women are getting into crypto; they're excelling at it, and we like to see more women. You know, trying to take the because let's face it, Jeff, women are a lot smarter than men. We're cavemen, Jeff. We don't really know a lot about what to do. We beat our chests a lot. We move heavy things. We got wallets. That's pretty much our role 
and how it works, right? So, but I want to say something, you know, it's becoming more evidently clear to me, and I think you as well, that the internet wasn't really a threat to the establishment, right? It wasn't a threat to those in Congress. It wasn't a threat to the regulators, right? It was just like, it was a place you could go and you could find things, right? It was the internet. It was like, okay, this is a great medium of people being able to talk, but decentralization has probably been the biggest scare to the financial institutions, to the governments of the world, because it's put their back against the wall. And the one that's done the most damage is really Bitcoin. Because when you when you when you bought some Bitcoin when it was a buck, when it was a thousand dollars, when it was five thousand dollars, and you see it hitting sixty two thousand dollars, Jeff, that's something to sort of take notice of, right? That's it. I mean, you know, and it, you're you're pointing out a you know something really significant here because from the internet perspective, did they you know did certain uh, powers that be go after or? You know, undermine the potential uh, uh, growth uh, possibilities or strategies of companies like Amazon. Look at how many uh, naysayers there were about Amazon. You know, and so you could look at that. But overall, from a regulatory perspective, um, they were a little bit hands off, and they basically said, "Hey, let this thing grow." Uh, they didn't really see a direct threat, uh, and it was the media that I think eventually ended up, you know, suffering the most. They took the biggest hit, and you know, now they've found ways. Uh, to re reinvent themselves uh, through storytelling, um, but that's that's a, another another uh, topic. But you, but you're right, you know. And right now, you know, it's a uh, it's a little it's a little disingenuous of them, you know, to you know come at this point and not really come out and tell the truth about you know why they're being so antagonistic. You know, why is it that they're ignoring regulatory uh, certainty? Uh, as much, and they're doing it and delaying it as long as they possibly can. However, there's individuals like the mayor of Miami that's you know full you know full steam ahead uh, with his objectives for Miami, uh, Wyoming. Uh, you know another example, and and where we're seeing some of the banking over there and Krakens over there, and you know so you're seeing some regional growth, but from a, a federal level, not enough, Chip. Yeah, not enough at all, and you know. One of the things that I love about the XRP community is the fact there's some real great characters in it. There's a lot of great characters, right? And a lot of, you know, different personalities. But I love the FUD busters. I like when somebody can look at something, analyze it, and say, hey, wait a minute. Uh, let's take a look at this headline right here. So it says, Thailand's oldest bank, SCB, acquires a 51% stake in crypto exchange BitCup, right? Siam Commercial Bank, Thailand's oldest bank, acquired this 51%. Exchange for Bitcoin for look at this, Jeff. 17.85 billion Thai bot. That's around 537 million US dollars. That's a lot of cash. That's a lot of money. And uh Bitcoin announced the news on Tuesday saying the deal is expected to be completed by the first quarter of 2022, pending that old bear regulatory approval. Um, and the CEO said that the Bitcoin acquisition will help create new growth value in the long term amid a fi new financial world. Now, none other than Leonidas, who is a fantastic uh, FUD buster here. But look at this. He goes, let me fix the title for you, SCB. He goes, all right, let me fix the title for you, The Block. SCB, Thailand's oldest bank, which is a RippleNet committee member and a Ripple partner, acquires a 51% stake in Thai's ODL exchange, Bitcoin. <laughs> That's a smackdown, right, Jeff? Yeah, if, if you want to open that up. You know, that's, <laughs> that's, yeah. That's a beautiful SmackDown right there. And it's like, this is what happens when you can kind of read between it. They kind of omitted that part, but it really kind of takes on a new a life with, with the headline that Leonidas put, because he's like the oldest Thai bank, number one, K got that part right, RippleNet committee member and Ripple partner acquired a 51%, which is controlling stake. Now, if you think about it like this, Jeff, if they acquired... For 535, um, what was it? 535 million dollars. It's over a billion dollar acquisition because they're only getting 51 percent. But it's the controlling interest. They'll get to do what they want with it. And then you got a Thai ODL on-demand liquidity exchange, which is Bitcoin. So yeah, you can so see partner, partner and uh, RippleNet committee member. I like it. That's a lot of drops, Chip. Yeah, it's a lot of drops and a lot. Again, it's great when you can do a lot in a very small little space. And again, this is the kind of thing. And if you're really looking for what's happening around 
you know, not only just in the, in the crypto world together. I mean, you look at the news on every project coming out daily. There's so much of it. We definitely can't cover it all. I mean, we tend to focus on obviously Ripple and XRP because we love the use case of it. And there's other things we focus in on as well. But when you start looking at the, the vast, I would say, just dump of news on a daily basis, you just can't, you can't keep up with it all. And when you guys see we're rolling out our new website and we roll that out, you'll be able to see all the stuff we cover and then all the stuff we don't cover. You'll see what's on the agenda. You'll see what we're actually doing. And that's going to be pretty exciting, Jeff, because we're hoping to roll it out. If not this week, if it doesn't, if it's not tomorrow, it'll be next week, Sunday or Monday, we'll roll it out. That's awesome. It's really cool. Yeah. Hey, you know, we're, we're talking about the banking space. We're talking about, you know, you mentioned Ripple. Um, one of the things that, uh, you know, ends up kind of circulating through Twitter, circ circulating through YouTube is every time uh, Ripple releases, or I shouldn't say Ripple releases, but every every uh, time uh, there's a an escrow release of, uh, of 1 billion XRP, and there was one, it's typically right at the beginning of the month. So uh, there was a, a release, um, and then there was a replacement of of that escrow. And so if you go over to XRP Arcade, actually did a really uh, nice job here, but here you have the XRP set aside and escrow is locked up. No one can use or destroy the XRP until the escrow has been successfully uh, finished. You know, so if we go back to when they created the escrow, and a lot of people don't even know how the escrow functions. And I think this, it's an important you know, thing to understand, especially now as you highlighted, you know, what was going on over in Thailand, you know, with a RippleNet partner and the ODL. And then you go back and and there's, you know, well, yesterday we talked about Mark Phillips with, and he referenced the 45 billion XRP in circulation, not really referencing what's in escrow. And, you know, and, and that's, you know, purposefully, um, but also trying to understand the significance of the escrow. And so if we look here and if we look at going back to the idea of the escrow starting in 2017, there were 55 escrows covering 55 months and 55 billion XRP at the time. And every time 1 billion is taken out, they use whatever they use. They replace the escrow right. at the 50, at the, you know, after the 55th month. So at the 56th month, then they continuously do that. So the escrows basically keep going until there's no more XRP or until there's a vote to end the escrow. But here, it's interesting to look at all of the escrows that have been taken out um, since the beginning, right? And so we have since uh, January of 2018, you know, how much of the escrow was taken out. And, and so if we start in January, they had 1 billion, the amount returned to escrow was zero. So there was 54 billion left. So in month one, they used all the XRP. In month two in 18, they actually only used 100 million XRP and they returned 900 uh, million back into escrow. And they did that in March, you know, of 18, all the way through till September of 18. And they used 200 million um, and they returned 800. And then they go to March of 19, they used uh, 300 million, returning 700. Then you continue down. Um, here's one chip in December of 2019. They used none. Uh, so again, they replaced all 1 billion. Um, and then you come down till the latest uh, escrow, November of 21, they used 200 million and they replaced 800 million back into escrow. So current uh, status, it looks like there's uh, 46 uh, billion, 900 million. Uh, so 46.9 left in escrow. And I think that's kind of a, an important significance uh, to look at. And he says, you, you know, talking about again, you know, how long it's going to take until uh, it evaporates. And here they look at uh, all of the different escrow wallets that have been used. And it's it's interesting. I think, it, you know, it's really interesting, you know, to to contemplate exactly, you know, what the significance of that is. And there's been a call for the uh, burning of that escrow. Yeah. There, so Stellar did that. I don't think it really worked out so well. I don't think we should be burning anything. But I wanted to ask you this, Jeff. XRP Speedboat, he'd like to place a bid on the virtual brick wall behind you. What are your thoughts on that? Hey, you know what? That's not a bad idea. You know, we can, uh, I'm not sure if that becomes a security or not. No, actually. It's an NFC. We can. <laughs> <laughs> an NFT. An a NFT, brick right? NFT. We could, we could do a brick NFT. That's not a bad idea. Why not? Jeff. We'll start, start auctioning, auctioning off space on the brick wall. But that's kind of a bad, 
nomenclature because you remember back in the day if like i bricked my phone like you did something and you bricked it it was like unusable just gotta be careful about that but speedboat that's well, something we gotta we gotta get a bid going so we gotta find out our yeah. bid going on right now so there we go that'd be interesting do you think pink floyd would come after us would you say i got another brick, brick wall no we have that's so we have that cool on the chain you know uh chrome yeah. sign back there so i think they'll be okay with that i think it's disguised enough jeff that i kind of know i think another they'll be absolutely yeah another brick in the wall i think they'll be fine with that but by the way, yeah, uh, so this is Alex. Lido buy a brick. Alex Yeet says, uh, "What if in swell event we all get the news that Ripple and the SEC case is done and they have a settlement? What if?" Yeah, mm. I think if we if we heard something like that, we would be. I would be super like stoked. Why? Because if they came out and said, "We hey, just want to let everybody know we settled," because if they said that, that would instantly mean one thing, Jeff: that today's XRP is not a security. Because the only reason, the only way they'd go to a settlement would be, as a Garlinghouse said, if they said that today's XRP is not a security. Otherwise, all bets are off. And that's what Garlinghouse has said. So, yeah, I mean, would I be happy? Yeah, I would be happy because I know that that's exactly what it meant. So that's something interesting to ponder here. I want to throw this up, Jeff. This is something that um, this tweet's pretty famous. It's been around for a while. Uh, since uh, 2020, there was actually an older version of this one, but this is Vitalik uh, Buterin. You know him better as the one of the co-founders of the Ethereum Foundation, obviously Ethereum, and you know him as a former flunky uh, that didn't make it as a uh, Ripple intern. Why? Not because of any of his doing, but because he couldn't get the visa to come into the states and ended up founding the number two crypto in the world. So there you go. It's not a bad trade-off, Jeff. But he Actually, he says he says here, he's replying to Crypto News, uh, Mike Novogratz and Ethereum. He says, it was the Ethereum Foundation, not me as an individual. I'm grateful to Novogratz and other early purchasers um, of the Ethereum Foundation's ETH. If it weren't for them, perhaps the Ethereum Foundation would not have survived financially. And Ethereum would have had a harder time growing to where it is today. To where I chimed in and said, let me translate this for you. This means thanks, Mike Novogratz, for participating in our initial coin offering. If not for Mike's participation, we would be dead in the water. Nice. Thoughts, Jeff? I mean, he doesn't say initial coin offering, but that's kind of what it was, right? But he said that right there, right? Yeah. Well, he, he doesn't He doesn't point it out, right but I just... Yeah, I had to translate it for everybody because thanks for participating in our initial coin offering because they won't ever cop to it. And then this was the uh, tweet right here, which was Novogratz has admitted to buying uh, ETH 500,000 from the Ethereum co-founder of Vitalik Buterin five years ago. And basically and then, saying they said that's what saved the foundation. That's it what wasn't saved for that purchase, right? There would have been no foundation is what he's saying. That's what he's saying. And what, what, what I'm saying is it all had to do with the uh, initial coin offering because they, they pre-sold it. Um, and he bought in pretty pretty early. I think it was ninety nine cents or something to that effect. Ninety or ninety nine yeah. cents, whatever whatever one they they priced it at a, some sort of a Bitcoin back in the day. So about put about a half a right. half a million dollars in there and became richer AF Jeff, a richer than all hell. So uh, you know what, that, uh, what AF stands for? <laughs> no, it's not what it stands for, Jeff. But you know you don't want to say that on here. But rich AF, I think everybody knows what that means. And so that's why I say AF because um, sometimes we say words or venture into statements that sort of like uh, rich as Brandon. There you, there you go, yeah, there you go. And speaking <laughs> of Brandon, we have don't forget about our pal um, Brenda because Brenda's. You forget about Brenda. I think Brenda's starting to lose it on a. Uh, and I'm talking about Brenda. I'm talking about Janet Yellen, and she sounds like that crazy old lady. Be like, get off my lawn! You know, like sort of a, like a. <laughs> You know, she's always yelling, stop yelling. What are you yelling at? What are you yip yapping about? And she's like, well, I think that, uh, that we should start charging. We should tax people on interest uh, that's not recognized or realized yet. And I'm like, what are you going on about, yo, bat? I mean, my God, what's going on? Hey, I'm Chip, just... I got to give a quick shout out here while we're on this. Uh, while oh, you're on that rant. Let me do please a quick do shout out. Come on, man, berserker. 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 I love the Berserker, oh. man. I man. love nah. Berserker. Berserker. Chip, man, I, I've been, you know, so I think, uh, so Mr. Wright brought up this idea of the wall, 
So I'm, I'm thinking about this more and more now. <laughs> what a great idea. Wait, who brought it, it up? Be, it was Mr. Wright, I think, was the one who came up with no. the idea of the brick in the wall. Was that no. Mr. Wright that came up with the idea? I mean, who was it, the, you mean, I mean, purchase, up, purchasing the yeah, wall. Purchasing the brick. It was XRP uh, speed. In the wall. Oh, I thought it was Mr. Wright. So between this, Mr. Two Wrong, them, Jeff. It was Mr. Wright and XRP Speed a speed a speedboat came up with the idea buying bricks in the wall. But think about if we can NFT the wall and everybody can buy a brick. You can oh, see, wow, you know, Jeff. buy a brick in the wall and they can put whatever they want on that brick. And then we can, you know, put up that uh we'll put it up. Be a full big NFT and everyone gets a little piece of the NFT. I like the way you think like because it. Can you imagine? Well, it's like when you know when you go to a uh, one of those, you know, you go to some center or something like that. And you see everyone donated a stone. They have the family name on it. I know you go to Epcot and Disney World. They have that whole walk up where people it donated, yeah, like a stone. It has your name or something on it. So it's not like it hasn't been done before. It hasn't done an NFT though. There you go. Never he been wants done the brick as an NFT above. Above on. Well, that's right more like cement. Beyond. That's like that's plaster over top of brick where we let the uh, <laughs> facade show. So it so we'd have to either sell off it. We'd sell off those individual bricks where it's red. Maybe zoom in, and we could sell off, you know, pieces of the plaster. That could be interesting. Could be really interesting. Sure, it could Jeff. Could be something uh, earth shattering. I think so. No one's ever. So, done that. yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know how crazy that would be. We'd so we didn't sell it. You know, it had to be something crazy. But I guess it could be okay. So there's a there's a content crate out there called. Um, her name is uh, Alexis Gay. That is her name. I don't know if it's a real name, but that's what she goes by, Alexis Gay. She put out this great email. I'm sorry, video. How did I get email crossed with video, Jeff? Where was my mind going? They're very it's similar. Hard. I, I could see how you could confuse them. Not thing. even close, Jeff. They're not even in the same like library or book or shelf <laughs> or anything like that, right? And, or folder. But she put together this video, which is really funny. It's uh, she's like, when you definitely understand NFTs, because a lot of people like, I don't get NFTs. So I think she's sort of a, she's sort of like a mainstreamed it for us. Time in the space, right, a whole new generation of creators. It's so much more than just owning a JPEG. And I totally understand why that is. Open source. Hang on a second, Jeff. I'm trying doing? to get the screen right. I'm trying to get the screen. I'm trying to get doing? the screen right so we can get on the, there. I you think might want to add the video, but there we go. Yeah, hang on. Three, <laughs> metaverse, there in the space. Well, when it's like a when it's a long video, we don't want to be taking up the, the words in the bottom of the screen. So here yeah. we go again. Let's watch this again. In the space, a whole new generation of creators. It's so much more than just owning a JPEG. And I totally understand why that is. Open source blockchain, Web3, Metaverse. They're essentially <laughs> tokens which are not fungible. <sighs> Can't even name all the exciting stuff happening in the sense that you couldn't funge them. Jack's first tweet. I mean, thank God that's an NFT. It's not ownership, but it represents ownership. Every day, oh my God, there's a new... There's a new one, deregulated, dot E, people. They really had a moment and I thought it was over, but they're still here. Frankly, I think it begs the question, what is art? Pretty late in the game not to understand NFTs. G-way. Gway? Gway. Is this, is it art? <laughs> They've been around for, actually, I have no idea. When that picture of a rock sold for $1.3 million, that's when it clicked. <laughs> I'm in a Discord. Why hodl Bitcoin when you can have your Twitter avatar look like Gorilla's album art? DAOs, that's related, but different. The same people are doing them, and I totally understand what that is as well. That was a lot to take in, Jeff, but that was pretty funny. And that's sometimes, <laughs> it's kind of like putting voice to some of the stuff that happens on crypto Twitter, you know, the oh, crypto Twitterverse. Awesome. But that was it. a lot of fun. I, I thought that was really solid and, and, and a good play for sure, man. Yeah, that's sweet. So... Hey, Chip, I, I want to bring this one up. And this is this is really cool. Um, I actually uh, reached out to um, uh, to Olya from this video on Twitter and said, hey, you know, it'd be great to have you come on and talk about. So she's uh, borderless, borderless uh, Bitcoin uh, travel show. And she started in Kiev and then went to El Salvador. Oh, nice. And while in Salvador, while in El Salvador, she met uh, these two guys. Uh, while they were filming in one area and they came up and they started rapping uh, and it was it's really uh, legit and I'll, I'll put that up and then at the end she has to make up a rap about bitcoin and then tips them in bitcoin so we the app and everything so i thought it was it's really solid um and so here it is right here but <laughs> god nft that'll mess you up <laughs> there you go speedboat <laughs> so so i'm gonna play this this is 
this is long, but there's you go this full segment. Screen? I'll do, yeah, I'm going to do the opening and then I'm going to fast forward to where she's with the uh, deputy minister of, oh, wow. of uh, crypto something in uh, the Ukraine. Uh, but let me go full screen just to give so you kind of get a taste of kind of an intro here. And I'm a Bitcoin believer. I came to Kyiv with this crazy nonsense idea to travel and pay only with Bitcoin. In my borderless show, you will see. So, you know, great idea. Uh, you know, she, let's see, let me fast forward a little bit. So here she is at the, uh, at the rental place and she actually pays in Bitcoin at the rental place. Thank you so much. That's it? Jeff, look at his eyes. He was like, he was almost as excited as she is. No, I didn't rent Tesla. My car is that one. Wah, wah, wah. This car cost <laughs> well, look at this. me 108,000 Satoshis a day. Oh, oh interesting. Cost 100 million Sats. Just like Sans, Sat or Satoshi is a smaller unit that people can use in daily life. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Ukraine has it so it's interesting. So then she kind of gets into uh, discussing the history of Ukraine a little bit, which I think is kind of a nice lead up to. The first architecture of Kyiv has been transforming for 14 centuries. Look at this. The buildings and streets combine more than 30 different architectural styles. So it's, it's kind of interesting, you know, and then she gets into the significance of what happened over in in that area from a freedom perspective and the protest has always been the center of public wow. political activity for me personally maidan is a place where human desire for freedom is engraved in every piece in every little stone of it literally with blood this place manifests at the same time people's courage desperation Fear, unity, love, and hope. Here's a photo of my dad at the Orange Revolution. In poor health, he went 500 kilometers to Kyiv to stand up for a change. When his friends asked why he was doing it, his response was, I want my kids to live better. He's no longer alive. So I think it's, you know, as she's leading into this, this whole idea and she's talking about, you look at where they were coming from, coming from communism, right? And then her dad's fighting and wants freedom, you know, right? And wants to live better, wants the, her, her to live better, you know? And I think it's, it's so, you know, moving and here she is. So she's, she meets with Alexander uh, Bormyakov, uh, an interview, and he is, let me see, I wrote this down. Um, he is the, hang on a second, let me see if I can find it, um, the minister, uh, where is he? The deputy minister of digital transformation. And so here we are, Chip, we started off talking about, you know, what's going on over in the U.S., what's going on in Europe in terms of regulatory normalcy and, and clarity. And here they are in the Ukraine, they understand freedom and what's needed, you know, to move away from centralized control. You know, but check this out. To find out what is happening in Ukraine, we are going to interview the Deputy Minister of Digital Transformation, Alexander Kornikov. And right now, oh, there is no law, but you, uh, there is something going around. In late 2019, there was a law, there was a basically anti Monty Lauderick law. And this is the first time where, when in, in the history of Ukraine where definition of cryptocurrencies uh, a period in, in, in official papers, so, but not in terms of, uh, uh, like, uh, explain what it is, uh, nature and, uh, and the rights, but just about the thing that if it's, uh, if it's been using, um, by individuals or companies to, as a payment, it should be under financial monitoring. It, it gave us, uh, like a head start that if we have this definition and recognition, we need to create rules explaining what it is and how to treat it. Because now we just have restrictions. We started to work on, on draft of the, we call it a virtual assets law. It's mm -hmm. just basic law explaining uh, the nature of cryptocurrencies, not just cryptocurrency, we call it virtual assets because we also 
included gaming assets. We also included tokenization processes. So it's not just about cryptocurrencies. It's, it's, it's bigger than that. And you hear that, Chip? I mean, to me, you know, this, there's so much significance in, in this, in this interview. This is the Ukraine. You know, what's going on in the U.S. where they get it over in the Ukraine and, you know, and they're putting it together. What, what's going on? Tell you what's going on. What's going on is you have a generation that remembers what it was like to fight for freedom versus you have a country that doesn't really understand that because they're too busy being woke and wondering about pronouns, Jeff. If I have to be real honest, because when you have real freedom and you're worried about freedom and you're worried about living free, you know, I'm a free man. I make the choices that I want to make. I do what I want to do. And that's being threatened. But when you have, when you have a generation of people who aren't that far removed, at least her father went and fought and, and to the point of where his best friend said, well, why are you doing this? It's because I have, to, I, I want my kids to grow up. He's not going to be around and is no longer around, but he wanted his kids to have a better world to live in. You know, it's a sacrifice. And he wanted that where when you get in developed countries, which haven't, you know, the last, you haven't had a war in, a, in some period of time, you're 20 years removed from anything like that. The next generation, they don't know. Because when you really have a lot of time in your hands, you start thinking about a lot of weird stuff. You start complaining about stuff that really aren't complaints. And I kind of think that frames the entire argument, just one man's take on it. But this is kind of what happens. Then we start worrying about, you know, it's like they call them first world problems. It's like, you know, I hate when you go to the, you know, when this particular restaurant and the fries are just too hot and it burns your tongue. Well, that's great because a lot of people don't eat, period, in other countries. And... You know, we have the UN trying to solve hunger and they're like, well, if we just had Elon Musk's uh, a little bit of his dough, we could figure this out. And um, he basically said, well, that's fine. I'm all in. But can you be transparent about it? Because I will give you a sum of money. That's six billion dollars or whatever they're looking six, whatever it was. He goes, but I want you to be transparent. I want all the accounting to be transparent. All of a sudden, Jeff, the UN silent, not a question not a comeback, not a, hey, we'll do it, because we all are aware that if you follow the money, you can't follow the money. Nobody knows what it is. But guess what will change all that, Jeff? A little thing called blockchain. And this is why everybody's running scared. You ever like, you know, you turn on the light at night. Here in Florida, you know, you have, if you turn on the night, and this is in my earlier days, I'm not, not obviously I've got extermination services, whatever. But you, when you lived in some of the Roach motels that I lived in in early days, you flip on the lights and they just scurry like little... You know, they're all over the place. It's kind of what you see what's happening right now. They're running, they're scurrying. And, uh, you know, what? one of the things that really is frightening to them is the whole this whole concept of decentralization, the whole concept of a DAO, because it really is, it puts the people who, who are, we the people, in charge. And um, this is where I think that we're seeing acceleration because they started waking up, you know, crypto and Bitcoin and ha 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 was funny until it wasn't funny anymore, Jeff. And I think that's a lot of what it is. And, you know, yeah. you got to be careful out there because there's a lot of there's a lot of rug pulls. And, you know, a rug pull is when you jump into a project and it, it just yeah. it disappears. <laughs> well, I'm going to put I'm going to put one up here right here. I'm going to put one up here because this is uh, again, you guys got to be careful out there. I mean, just because. So here we go. Game over. The Squid Game inspired crypto scam collapses as price crashes from 2,800 USD to zero. It was dubbed Squid. The cryptocurrency rallied as much as 75,000% to cross over 2850, but then dropped to near zero on November 1st. Well, everybody associated it with, uh, with net, the Netflix series. And so they, there was an assumption that somehow it was interrelated and it wasn't. Um, and that's unfortunate, you know, so somebody took advantage of the situation, uh, rolled this out, um, didn't bother to tell anybody there was no association and people jumped into it because of the hype. Now, you know, was there a real rug pull? Somebody was running away with some cash, you know, and, yeah. and who was it? Uh, uh, and so that's where you have actual, there's other laws in place for cheating people. You don't even need a specific law around cryptocurrency like uh, the G-Man uh, Daddy G would have you believe that you need a specific law for crypto to protect you from something like this. There's laws on the books that prevent scams. 
And then they're going to go and say, find out who that person, you know, the group behind it was they go after them. And what's funny about this, Jeff, and this is what I always say, you know, sometimes the whole idea, sometimes, you know, people who have nefarious sort of ideals and criminals, sometimes they put so much work into to the wrongs of uh, uh, the bad part, you know, stealing something, ripping people off. They put so much detail into it that they hit upon something. Uh, people were sort of into it, and they said at the core of the retail craze lay the popularity of the Squid Game. The scammers promoted Squid as a a play to earn cryptocurrency inspired by the South Korean TV fictional show in which people put their lives at risk to play a series of children's games for the opportunity to win $45 billion. Now, the funny part of that is they could have turned this into a legit project. And at the end of the day, they walked away with $3.38 million, which in the grand scheme of things is not a lot. It's sad that Three point three eight million of people's money is gone, uh, but when you have when you you know I'm seeing this in the DeFi space. Some of these APY returns when they're five hundred percent, you know, uh, twenty thousand percent. This was seventy five thousand percent. But yeah, they could have turned this into a legitimate project. They quite honestly could have turned it into a project, and they could have hired okay. some people. They could have got some smart people. And they said, let's turn this into some kind of a game. Let's let's create some NFTs. In other words, they didn't have to rug pull it. They got some really big traction because of the association and they could have done a legit project, but instead they decided to rip people off. And the funny part about it is they're en probably going to end up getting caught and then going to jail. So yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Jeff. People. Exactly. And you don't need, you know, like I was saying before, you don't need all the, you know, uh, baked in uh, uh, control mechanisms over crypto in order to protect people from scams. And that and that's really, you know, where government intercedes, you know, where you have regulatory bodies to protect from major scams like that. Uh, and they just need to do their job and use the laws that are on the books. And, and government always tends to overreach and try to create new laws instead of enforcing existing laws. And there's a perfect example. You know, the SEC could come in and, you know, CFTC and some other agencies and say, we researched it. It's not legit. It's time to send in, uh, you know, the enforcement and and go arrest them wherever they might be. If they're over in South Korea and it was international, you'd go uh, and send Interpol and FBI, you know, whoever, whoever it is. And, and you arrest them for uh, for the fraud that they committed. Uh, and it's unfortunate because on the other side, you know, I, I want to know, like, you know, where, you know, here's here's another, you know, perfect example of of utility. So, you know, I was going through this one. These are the two guys that were, you know, that ran into uh, this uh, borderless uh, uh, crypto uh, podcaster in El Salvador. And, you know, they were rapping. And then she asked them to make a uh, rap about Bitcoin while she's tipping them. Now, this is this is the power of the crypto space. I don't care if she's using Bitcoin or it doesn't matter, you know, because you can interchange that asset with anything. But imagine at, in the description of the video, she puts their Bitcoin wallet. So people anywhere in the world could watch this video and tip them in Bitcoin in El Salvador. Two guys that would never have any interaction with anybody else outside of you know, their area. They could put this up on YouTube. And now all of a sudden they can start getting tips from all over the world. That's the power of digital asset. But check this out real quick. <laughs> Look at this. So helping them set up the app first time. Look at this. Never had the app before. They got their mobile phone. They pull out their phone over in El Salvador. And how amazing is that, right? She just sent them $20. $20 in Bitcoin over to El Salvador. I mean, just like that. All right. That's pretty so, cool, Jeff. It's so cool. It's so amazing to see this. So, so all right. Bitcoin is freedom. Bitcoin is libertad. Bitcoin is futuro. Bitcoin. Entonces nosotros usted quiere que le digamos eh, que hablemos bien del eh, positivamente del Bitcoin. De Bitcoin. Sí, pero usted quiere que le demos unas unas estrofas que usted diga. Uh, no, Doesn't really no know a lot. Con nosotros. So, all right. Ya me porque no puedo cantar ni no puedo. No, 
voy a decir Bitcoin, Bitcoin, libertad, Bitcoin es futuro y después tú. Y usted te ajá, corre. There we go. There we go, hang on, there we go. There we go. Anabolic B. Uno, dos, tres, ahora, ahora. Bitcoin es libertad, Bitcoin es futuro. Bitcoin es libertad, Bitcoin es el futuro. El sello que es Bitcoin es ser el futuro, porque lo vamos a hacer así apenas prematuro. El que no que ahorita, bueno, se proclama. El Bitcoin no está poniendo en alto, pues una linda dama. El que tú vos sabes que yo soy certero, el Bitcoin es el futuro. Man, it, 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 I found this and I'm watching this. I'm like, this is so amazing, Chip. It, it's just, it's amazing to me that you look at where they are. They're just out there somewhere in El Salvador, right? These guys, they don't even know any really thing about Bitcoin. Now, all of a sudden she teaches them, helps them set up a, a wallet, tips them in Bitcoin. Awesome, right? Man. And these guys are just, uh, you know, just just it's just man they're just making it up on the spot you know and they're rapping and out in the middle of nowhere right i mean not in the middle obviously they're in a neighborhood but to me that that's what this is all about and it's you know it's it's man it's it is revolutionary you know it's amazing yeah it just goes to show you how really i mean the other thing it brings up to me is like it's it's closing the borders too like there are no it's like when you talk about borderless i mean it's right on with what her podcast is about because it is borderless because like you said, you know, I'll never forget one of the early, I was watching something when the first time I heard about Bitcoin, it was on some morning show, might've been like 2009, 2000, and they said like, hey, it was a, it was a, it was a card that had a, a, a QR code on it. They're like, this right here is a Bitcoin and it blah, blah, blah. Well, they held it up, someone freeze framed it and they grabbed the Bitcoin right off of the screen because it had the QR code. And uh, it was like a uh, brilliant, you know, it's like, and they're like, oh, someone took it and stole it. Well, they put it up to the screen. They're like, it was, a big, it was like a card of some kind. <laughs> this is a Bitcoin. And then the Bitcoin was gone, right? Because someone snagged it right off of the uh, right off of the TV. And that's just the ingenuity that you have. But again, look at that. I mean, it's amazing to see all of those, um, you know, awesome, uh, you know, people. I'd love to do that too, Jeff. That's what's going to happen on the moon time. I'm just going to travel, put together a different kind of podcast. It'll be a travel podcast where I just go hang out with people, have a lot of fun. And there's one of my favorite YouTubers. Um, he's from South Africa, actually. And he is the nut. He's he's an absolute nut because he goes into, he'll go to Colombia and he'll go to the worst part of town and just start hanging out and drinking with people, strangers, Jeff. That's and, awesome. um, I'm like, what is the guy doing? I don't know. He just, he has like a protective bubble over him and he just always ends up to uh, landing on his, on his uh, feet. But um, it's fun to watch. It's good entertainment. And all he does is travel around and pays for it out of his YouTube channel and makes, you know, makes some fun things happen. So it's all good. It's all good, Jeff. It's all good, Chip. So Chip, on the, uh, on the thumbnail, I put um, obviously XRP, bunch of question marks. And behind uh, the woman on the on the thumbnail, there's all these different assets, right? All of them at their kind of like max numbers that people have been throwing out there. Bitcoin, 500,000. ETH, 10,000. Matic, $10. Solana, 400 on the way to five. BNB right now, almost on its way to 600. Can it get to 1,000? All of these different assets uh, that are, you know, all, you know, all this conversation. Uh, SHIB you know, going to a penny, uh, people talking about Doge to a dollar, um, XLM to a dollar or $5. And then, you know, then we're sitting staring at XRP, you know, and here we have, you know, Bitcoin being utilized, you know, uh, you know, around the world, uh, whether it's efficient or not, doesn't matter. It's being utilized. We talked about what Ripple is doing, building out and scaling ODL all over the place. Uh, yet, you know, the XRP digital asset seems to be, you know, percolating and just, 
sitting there, you know, with all this, these big question marks next to it in terms of what's going to happen to it. Where is it going? The technology of the ledger still has so much more baked into it and interoperability baked into it than all of these other projects combined. And all these projects are just, you know, growing and building. And there's, you know, it's still unforeseen uh, in terms of uh, the potential of the ledger. And we talked about this yesterday a little bit with Flare and Songbird. And man, it just, it gets your brain, you know, just churning, you know, thinking about the potential. Jeff, I don't know. I mean, I don't know where it's headed, but, you know, the people that threw those prices out, I'm like, as you're like ripping through them, I'm like, you know, it's not outlandish. It's not, I don't even know if it's crazy anymore. Now, I think maybe three years ago or whatever, you know, maybe not all the projects were around, but maybe you think it's crazy. But in this day and, you know, age, I I don't know. It wasn't, it didn't sound so crazy to me. I don't know that as you were saying them, people might think, well, that's, that'll never happen. It's like, okay, I'm all right. I, it's, but I can see that happening. You know, it's not necessarily something so outlandish i mean could it happen yeah i mean we talked about you know we had that article we talked about last night you know mark made this whole assumption that well xrp was designed to be ten thousand dollars you know if you think about it it's going to move all the money and we start doing the math and that's where he loses me on that stuff but mark phillips put out that cool article and that was in 2019 so when i look at stuff like that i'm like yeah you know that's uh that's pretty interesting when you start looking at it like that, man. I'm like, it's a. Uh, let's see. Let me yeah. see if I want. I want to. I want. Yeah. I want yeah. to put this up here, um, because this. I'm going to tie this in. I know it seems like it's a. It's. I'm going around the bend here, but I'm going to tie this in. So you guys, you guys know about the island boys, right? Island you know boys. What about the island boys, oh, yeah. right? The island boys, right? The island boys, yeah. right, Jeff? We got to do an island boys rap. So I just play a little bit of this. Tell me if you hear it. Island boys. You hear it? Yeah. Yeah. So here we go. I, I'm a just island boy. I'm a just island boy. Ooh. I'm a just key white going. You're going to keep that gun. Oh. I'll be just staring at the sun. I'm just out full gazing. I'm like, well, pull where I'm staying. They're like, you want to be famous. I'm trying to be out all oh. greatest. I'm going to float all <laughs> boy. I got a real down tropic. I'm yeah, island boys. I'm a real island boy, right? So then. So then let me uh, queue up this next one because I have to uh, remove it and then add the next one here. So we're kind of going in succession right here. I'm going to pull this one up. Okay. <laughs> which is Jeff and which is Chip? <laughs> you know, that's funny, Jeff. We don't have our name tags on. Well, that's we a do. good point. Only, no, we do. No, he's talking about the, the Island Boys. <laughs> oh, got you guys. I was said, like, okay. You said we need to get the Island Boy rap going. Yeah, so. we got the Island Boy rap. So... So then these two guys uh, for Halloween and, and for for jokes, they went ahead and did this thing. Uh, if I can, I, I hate the way they just, just let me share it. My gosh, let's see. I think this is it, Jeff. Let's see if this is it here. Let me know if you hear sound. Yeah, it's a little low. Okay, let me turn there it we up. Go. So these are two guys <laughs> dressed up like the Island Boys. Island They're just trying to make it. Oh, I'm an island boy. Hey, I'm a just island boy. I'm a just island boy. What's the end? I'm a just island boy. I'm a just island boy. I'm just trying to make. So, Jeff, I'm, I'm, I'm like a little worried. Like they're better than the original island boys. They got little harmonies going on there, right? Yeah. The island boys. There's a, there's another one where the real island boys are watching this with a straight face. And um, not laugh, and not right. laughing. <laughs> so I couldn't find that one, right? I couldn't for some reason I couldn't find it. But let me uh, let me let me tell you why this is all going to have a payoff. Because if you're not familiar with this, you got to have the payoff here, and we got to go to none other than uh, feature in our pal. Uh, what's his name? Ba uh, Freed Banks. Freed, whatever his name is, right? Oh yeah. Man. There's a payoff here, Jeff. To, to stay with me here. Stay with me. So let's go to this. Here we go. Let's play this and let's here. Let me throw this full screen. This is on CNBC and someone did this. Let's look at this right here, Jeff. There he is, Banks Freed, right there from FTX. And here's the interviewer. This is a uh, CEO on Switch and Island. So let's hear what he has to say about it. So I have to say I'm a little disappointed by your your backdrop because I thought because of that clampdown that you've moved your headquarters from Hong Kong to the Bahamas. Where, where's the beach? 
Cause I'm an island boy and I've been trying to in my head. Oh, I'm an island boy. Hey, I'm a just island boy. I'm a just island boy. I'm a just keep that gun. I'll be just staring at the sun. I'm just like a fool gazing. I'm like, who else I'm staying? They're like, you want to be famous. I'm trying to be out of the you get the rest of it, chap. But... Oh my god, <laughs> that is some funny <laughs> stuff, isn't it? Oh, that's awesome. I'm an island boy, I put my best on, yeah, like a one mine. So it just gets progressively better, Jeff. That was pretty good. I'm that's an awesome. island boy, an island <laughs> boy. America's a up country just too much <laughs> it really like, is and you know what thank god for freedom because we are just zany crazy ridiculous thank people god. living the dream jeff as they say but those two guys in the in the hot tub i'm just an island man. oh god oh, I man, love it's it. awesome. you know you brought up ftx that ftx guy is just crushing it and he just Sounds, hired fire. and he just hired um uh an ex cftc uh commissioner to head up uh, some of their stuff. Um, is he an island check, boy? He's an island boy. I'm sure of it. Definitely an island boy. Um, and I know you brought this up uh, in one of your things over here. I think we're referencing a little bit earlier, but man, the mayor mm. of Miami just crushing it. Also, right, Miami just taking off as a as an epicenter for uh, crypto, a crypto hub, a blockchain hub. And the mayor of Miami is getting serious. He's saying to uh, the president of El Salvador, you know what? I'm up in the ante. I'm going to take my next paycheck 100% in Bitcoin. Not all of his paychecks, his next paycheck. So next paycheck, 100% in Bitcoin and up in the ante. I want to see what is the president of El Salvador going to do next? Because, man, uh, Miami is just going to be printing money in crypto that's what that's uh that's what's happening next yeah it's pretty amazing i mean and it's it's kind of like this hometown pride thing even though you know we're in south florida here obviously miami i'm gonna be in miami in an hour i mean i'm north of miami but you know when you see francis suarez doing all this amazing stuff and you see that he started miami coin with the whole thought of offsetting taxes okay this is somebody who is pretty much one up now what now what i don't understand you got Suarez, who's a Democrat. You got a Republican-controlled state, more or less. And yet, here's a nonpartisan issue. The two, why isn't there going to be a summit up in Tallahassee, which is the capital of Florida? Why wouldn't there be some kind of a summit where they could really figure out, like, how can we one-up and best, not only Wyoming, but what's going down in Texas and everywhere else? And let's, let's set the table so that not only Miami, but Florida can become the number one spot and destination for crypto projects, right? And we call them projects, but for blockchain projects, for NFT projects, for uh, DeFi, whatever it can be, to have some friendly regulation here inside the state itself. Let's let's you know that's one of the great things about the U.S. is there's 50 states. Someone once famously thought there were 57, but that's Heinz 57. But somebody thought there was. Just saying, it was an ex-president, chap, and that happens sometimes. Sometimes you forget how many states there are. It's sometimes um, it's confusing. You know, it's, we haven't always had 50. So I could see how. Yeah. We had 13 uh, at one time. And they're like, we got to change that number because that's apparently bad luck. At least in this culture, we look at it as bad luck. And uh, so much so, if you guys want to know, if you guys go to New York or LA or, you know, even Miami, you get into a hotel and you want to know, are they playing Are they playing the uh, superstition game or not? And the first thing you do is look at the elevator. There's no 13th floor. It goes from 12 to 14. So if you're on 14, you're really on 13 but they don't number it 13 because no one wants to stay on the 13th floor. I like 13. 13. Like Jim D is saying, man, Tampa has a big crypto convention this week. Did you know that? I was unaware that uh, they had a crypto convention, but what kind of crypto convention, Jim D? I want more details on this. I don't know what that is. I mean, it'd be a uh... crypto convention, Chip. I know, but like, what? Do, I mean, like, I like to know. It's like, it's like vague. It's like, they're having a crypto. What does that mean? I don't know. It's a crypto convention. Well, Jeff, I can tell you one thing is that's for sure is you and I will not be there. I got stuff going on this weekend. You got stuff I going on. Be. I will not be there. But and then I look will, at this, uh, Jeff. In from another uh, area. Well, there you go. You see? 
But look at this. I mean, just again, man, if you guys ever doubted the best place to be is in crypto. Uh, wait a minute. Let me put this up here. So this is Yee. He says, what if, what if it comes out with an Island Boy NFT JPEG or those two kids make it to Fortnite video game skin characters with their own dancing movements? You know, that's what's next for that. I'm just an Island Boy. I'm an Island Boy. I'm just I a crypto boy. I'm just an <laughs> on the chain boy. I'm, a chain, I'm an OTC family. Is Fortnite still a thing? I don't know. My kid used to play it a lot. I used to watch play it. I don't know, Jeff. I don't know if it's still a thing. It, it is. It's gotten pretty cool, actually. I, I had to give thing, off video Chip. games. Still a thing, Chip. I had to swear off video games, Jeff, because I just had that was like a weird addiction that I couldn't. One more of this, one more of that, one more level, one more game, one more, you know, and one I love more. Video. I do too. I'm not going to say that. I just sometimes get so. Look at this. Avalanche creates a 200 million fund to lure. You like that? I see that lure. Like. Come yeah. over here. Yeah. Come over here, crypto. Come over. Get a little closer. I got a something for you. It's all $200 million right here. And they're just like, you know, flopping it off. $200 million fund aims to foster growth and innovation on the Avalanche Network. Um, the Avalanche Foundation unveiled Blizzard. It's this fund which will have more. Think about that. $200 million box and in incentives to developers who build on Avalanche. And so there's kind of taken a page from Ripple's book that said, hey, you know, we gave uh, Forte a gaming company, a hundred million to, to basically lure developers, but they didn't say you had to build on the uh, XRPL. They said it's got to be blockchain friendly. So they didn't designate that. They're saying here that they have to build it on the Avalanche network, which I make sense. They're fun. Um, same with Algorand, same type of thing with the, uh, um, but they're fun. The fund will provide liquidity to those early stage projects that innovate decentralized finance, better known as DeFi non-fungible tokens, the NFTs and other products on Avalanche. It's a proof of stake network that launched in September 2020. It boasts Ethereum virtual machine compatibility, allowing devs to put decentralized applications over from Ethereum. The network now boasts more than 320 projects. Wow, Jeff. Currently building on it, including a top stablecoin issuer, Tether, popular decentralized exchange, SushiSwap, and the Oracle providers, Chainlink and The Graph. So it's pretty interesting. And it's great to see that, you know, all these funds are popping up. And what it's doing is it's going to expand the ecosystem to where it's just, you want to talk about an avalanche exactly would be the appropriate nomenclature. It's going to just, just blow away the, uh, you have all these funds going on, all these builders that are coming in. I love this concept, Jeff. What do you think about them having these funds to entice people? you know, these developers to build on their network and come up with apps. I like it. I think, I think it's important. You know, I think if you're going to, if you want to entice people over, you should have a fund to help them build, to help them innovate, Can, similar to uh, Ripple X, similar to uh, the Ethereum Foundation. You know, if you want to attract people to your ecosystem, why not have a fund that helps uh, fund those projects? I think it's brilliant. I think it's a great idea. Look at this. John Doe says, uh, so terrible, so good on the chain. You missed one of the Island Boy crypto token hype videos. That's what I thought you were getting into. There's so many of them, man. You can't watch them all. No, we were just, uh, just, uh, we were threading a different needle over there. So that happens. Look at here. It is right here. Jim D says the Florida Bitcoin and blockchain summit. I wish we had known about that, Jeff. We might've been able to plan something because uh, one of the things we want to, nice. yeah, one of the things we want to do is take this on the road and you know, set up well, a little. We've got the NFT conference coming up. When's that? That's down in Miami. It's coming up. Yeah, in, uh, that's right. I think I'm going to be re. Week. Yeah, sorry, Jeff. I'm going to be reorganizing my canned goods in alphabetical order. I do that every year when that conference is going on. So, NFT conference, three hundred ninety nine dollar entrance fees. Now look at this break in Australia Bank just announced storing and selling Bitcoin. Yeah, we had Where's that as one of our news. It's one of our news what items as well. It? Which bank is it? Yeah, it's in, it was in my thing. It was in my grab bag. I don't know if I stuck it in the keep or not. Uh, I forgot which bank it was. Australia's largest bank offers Bitcoin services. That was one of the stories. And As I don't know. But we... Volt. So you had Volt Bank was the only one accepting crypto in Australia. That was beginning of October. Uh, so if they're just announcing, that means maybe there's another one. I'm not sure which one it is, Jeff. I don't really recall, but I do recall this. It we stream it's guy, so guy can throw that in there for us. Yeah, throw it in the chat. We stream six days a week, Sunday through Thursday, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time. And then it's Jeff does his rants on Saturday morning from eight to nine. 
And uh, that's pretty much all I have, Jeff. You have anything sure. else? I'm gonna I'm gonna be coming from uh, I'm gonna be coming in from a secret location on Saturday. So sweet. Be tuning in from a com so tomorrow night, Chip. We actually have um, an interesting project that not too many people know about. Casino I don't think a lot of people know about it. Casino Coin. We have Daniel Keller and Quad Jacks coming in here. That's that his Twitter handle. But uh, Jack. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see where Daniel's coming in from. I don't know if he, he's at the Isle of Man yet. You know, he was in Germany, but I think he was he was on his he was moving to Isle of Man, so I think he might actually be in Isle of Man, which would be good or better for a uh, gooder. Did I just say gooder? Which would be better, better, better. Much, better. Much, much gooder better. than much gooder than anything else. And of course, uh, Jack is in uh, he's in Vegas, I believe. So the right Vegas, place to be for Casino Coin. So we'll talk about new developments with the project. I think it's a great project. It's built on the XRPL. You know, they've been through a lot of trials and tribulations, but, you know, I got super excited when I when I realized that they were coming back to the XRPL. They were kind of like injecting new life into the project. And I think it's going to be a really fun night, guys. Come on tomorrow night. Invite your friends, wake your neighbors, you know, bring your dogs along, whatever. Yeah. Just so it's you know, haram. Casino Coin is haram. That means is it, it haram? Is All right. It well, that's good, too. That because is it is it because of the XRPL or is it? That's no, good to know, not. too. There's, there's some more to it, you know, but hey, so check it out. Um, Australia Commonwealth Bank. So you've heard it, heard it here Commonwealth, on the chain go. first, the first to announce it in the U.S. Maybe We're not, not the Jeff, first, but okay. maybe not the first, but Commonwealth Bank, uh, Commonwealth Bank. And by, by the way, it is the largest, the largest bank. In Australia. In Australia. And what does that mean? That's exactly the explosion we're talking about. A year ago, we didn't see this happening. Three years ago, we didn't see any of this happen. We were like, give us tidbits of information. Now there's so much going on. You got the you got the biggest bank in Australia, and everyone's like, Yeah, hold my beer. It's like that's a massive story. And everyone's like, Yeah, you know. Hey Alan, have a great night yourself, my man. I wanted to really appreciate you showing up. Give a shout out to uh to Alan for the support from the other day. Yeah, agreed, man. Yeah, thank you very much. And guys, thank you for being here. The best uh, thing I can say to you guys gamble. is that you, well, you can support this puppy. Or, um, there because yeah, there you go. So there you go. Boom! Subscribe. Click that notification bell, and uh, that way you'll be notified every time. Subscribe. Click that notification bell, or share with your friends, or tell a neighbor. You know, and say you could just be like in a in a shop somewhere and say, "Hey, you heard of crypto?" And be like, "No," and be like, "On the chain." You can do that creepy thing that uh, that Biden does where he goes, on the chain, where he does that weird whispering thing, Jeff. It's really weird. It's creepy. It's very creepy. He did it again today. It was like, the United States of America. So creepy. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't know what's going on, man. It's oh, like, man. it's such a Come trip. On, let's, go. let's go, Brandon. Come on. Let's, let's go, go, Brandon. Let's go, Brenda. Right, Chip. So and without further ado. Further ado. <laughs> further ado further ado without further ado that's it chip we out we are out okay let's go let's go here. are you down with otc please like subscribe and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops